The news broke Wednesday night. Paul Macbeth has signed a 10-year, $10 million contract endorsement deal with Discraft. fans to know about me is I want to push the sport. I want to push the sport not just for myself but for everyone. Remarkable. And I feel like and whatever I do in my career really is not only way, helping me and my family, yeah. but yeah, also and we're, the other players around. We're not fringe. And we're not grassroots. We're it's real. Just, we're here. $10 million. Dollars, that, like this is obviously unprecedented. Again, another minus 18 round. One of these days you're gonna have to do it without a par. You can keep sneaking in these eagles and pars. As soon, soon as I let this go. Yes. <laughs> I knew it wasn't dead center, but there was no way that thing was going. Yeah, it was just such a great line the whole way. And, and there you see the reaction is Paul Yulberry immediately calling the greatest round in the history of the game. That's just history right there in the making. And to do it on such a large stage, on such an Every morning, every morning when I lived in California, I had to say buenos dias, abuelito. It's my grandfather. There you go. He was always cooking breakfast. Buenos dias, abuelito. Well, we get to go, get to go change a bunch of kids' lives. That's the goal. That's the exciting part. Mexico has a population of youth, they're called Los Ninis, uh, which means they neither work nor go to school. And the last statistic that I read, it was 8 million children and youth in Mexico who don't work, don't go to school. The ranch started in a park like this, hanging out with kids playing pickup soccer. One of the things I really appreciate about Mexican culture and and even Baja culture is very laid back, very relational. That's what I love about disc golf as well, is this that community aspect. So just going around with some friends and chatting um, fits very, very well. I prefer to bring people out here first before they even get to see the ranch because for us, when we say the ranch, we think of the kids that are out here, the youth that are out here, the families. The kids here, it's not just that they're lacking opportunities, there's active systems that, of, of oppression, of injustice that are, that are pushing them down. There's a lot of drugs, alcoholism, narco-violence is a very real calling. It's easy to get into, but not easy to get out of. And those who want to get out, um, it's not easy. They have to either move. Uh, and even this last year, we had one of our youth that has been part of our programs for years. He was shot and killed as he uh, got involved in the wrong community. We don't like to use the term poor people um, because that puts the adjective on a person. And we believe nobody as a person is poor. They have value, they have gifting, they have talent. And to come in and be a voice for them, to be an advocate, we are, are stepping in to just walk alongside them in life. It's like, oh, some they get electricity, they get water. When we first started in these neighborhoods, there were not, there was not electricity, there was not water. There's still no paved roads. Here's a question for you. What is the best car to take on the ranch road? Is this what we're supposed the to get? The best like car a or a Baja. The best car to take on the ranch road is whatever car is not yours. Yeah. That is the best car. Yeah, come on, Dustin. This ain't yours. <laughs> My name is Dustin Leatherman. I'm the executive director of the Paul Beth Foundation. People just have a vision and passion to put in disc golf courses around the world. You know, our mission is to work with underserved communities to bring disc golf to places where it's not. Paul being from Mexico, having his roots there, as an organization we thought it just made a lot of sense to make Mexico our first project. When we came upon this opportunity with Rancho El Camino, uh, it just seemed like an awesome fit. My name is Pete Johnson. I'm the director here at Rancho El Camino. 
My family and I moved here to Mexico and to La Paz to work here at the ranch over nine years ago. We just felt at peace and honestly at home and, and feeling that this was the place where we should come and dedicate and move our, our lives. When I think of Mexico, all I had ever heard is it's a beautiful version of what Southern California is. Less city, less people, more beautiful place. That's all I had ever heard. As soon as we talked to them here at Rancho El Camino, I uh, saw the flyover and it was just like, all right, that's gonna be perfect. We're gonna work with that and we're gonna make so. it happen. Dehydration starts with feeling thirsty. So if you feel thirsty, you're already on dehydration and it ends in death. So we say we wanna keep on this side of the feeling thirsty. Just stay on top of drinking water. Paul was That's asking it. about uh, wild, uh, any like snakes, things like that to worry about. It is starting to heat up, so snakes are starting to come out more. Um, there are rattlesnakes, but we just say any snake you see, assume it's a rattlesnake. We were excited to put a course in, but I wanted to verify, you know you're coming to the Baja, and not just the Baja, the Southern Baja, the desert. It is a very intense and extreme environment. So assuming every plant has thorns and spines, a lot of the rocks are like cheese graters. Insects, tarantula hawks, big wasps that like pack a punch when they sting you, regular tarantulas, all sorts of spiders, rattlesnakes, disc golf extreme in this area. <laughs> We can just walk and see it. Okay. Go from there. <laughs> Does water ever flow through here? Oh, yeah. When you get the rains? So this is just all free flowing water. But that only happens maybe two or three times a year. If you look at the course on paper, you know you're gonna see a lot of holes that aren't above 250 feet and are probably closer to 150 feet. But that's, that's not what this course is about. It's about the, the property that they have here, the rocks, the palm trees, the water, the, the cactus, the thorns. It utilizes all of that. I played some mountain courses where they like bolt the baskets into like the side of the rock. They don't even like drill a hole. But I think it'd be easy enough to just, you could probably pile up rocks easier than bolt something into the ground. Hi doggy. My name is Joey Tamale. I'm from St. Paul, Minnesota. I've been playing disc golf for about 12 years, speaking Spanish since I was four years old in an immersion school all the way until I graduated high school. I got a text from Paul Macbeth, which like immediately is like, whoa, you know, because I don't get a lot of texts from him. Usually I'm initiating the conversation, but he's like, what are you doing in this week in May? And I remember my response was, whatever it is you're, you're about to tell me. Just a couple of guys walking through the desert, you know? This is the desert. This is, not, this is no joke. I imagine that most courses are put in beautiful forests. I've seen different locations uh, around in the U.S. or other parts, but here is, is the Baja. It's dry, it's super hot, the terrain is very mountain style. Yeah. Down over there, if we design nine, it doesn't look like there's much trees, there's more terrain. Yeah. You can shoot across the water, two, 250 max. So the goal of the course is create a really nice beginner friendly course that everybody could take advantage of. Doug from the board decided he was going to, you know, being dynamic and being, you know, our first project, he committed to make this happen just weeks after the DDO. So Dustin Leatherman first approached me about being a part of the Paul Macbeth Foundation, oh, about a year ago. Told me what was going on and asked me if I wanted to be a part of it. And uh, when I found out that the organization was gonna work on putting disc golf courses into areas that were underserved or did not have disc golf available to them, I thought, man, this is the perfect thing to get involved with. And uh, it was an easy decision for me. Doug was saying his most popular course in Emporia was their Hammond Park, which is their smallest one. With this being a dynamic disc one, we went with that kind of theme. The one that people are gonna come out here, not really lose any discs, just enjoy. I remember our first meetings, we were talking about what it was we were gonna do, where the courses were gonna go, and I think it's very cool that our first course is actually going into Mexico. A veteran basket by dynamic discs. Going into the ground in Mexico. There's nothing like this that exists here in this area because really no one even has some seen a frisbee, seen a disc. 
And so we're excited about having this opportunity to serve the children and youth that we work with, but also opening it up to the public. Uh, this is Lazaro Martinez. What I do in the ranch, uh, I'm the in charge of maintenance. We work for the community and for the kids of the community. Frisbee, like this kind of sports, is not normal for Mexico. It's not very like like popular. But I, I was interested about it because I want to learn something something different that I don't usually do. They would basically like give their license or like a credential and we would give them like their discs. Okay. And yeah. then when they're done, they yeah. give their discs back and they Perfect. get their license. Perfect. Yep. It's kind of that's the, how the it idea. works. Yep. That's exactly that's how it works. Growing up, I loved reading about all the old baseball players. My grandfather used to have books about each individual player. One of the biggest things I took away is like how baseball is in, in the D Dominican and, and Puerto Rico. They just use a stick and a rock. Disc golf could be the same way. You know, they don't all need baskets. They don't all need the highest tech equipment. They just need a disc and an opportunity. Deal, because I was thinking almost just pushing some rocks up to the front and then, like you said, backfilling it. Uh-huh. Just moved like this one and that one. And then just had the basket up by that palm tree. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Dustin? Yeah. That looks so fun. How far do you think that would be? 180? Oh. Yeah, I should. I didn't bring a range I know. I was just thinking we should have. So brought... when I was out here measuring, we had the GPS, and none of them were shorter than 150. Okay. Pensaba de poner rocas o unas llantas aquí, dos o tres. There's no point in having concrete tee pads, turf tee pads, you know, rubber pads. Like we just want to have disc golf here. I think the biggest factor on our end is time. Anywhere we feel like we can get that pull in, okay. in this. 60 foot circle, but anywhere we can find that we could dig the hole. How much, how too hard is it to get that bush out of there? Uh, not very hard at all. I think if we get this one and that one out, this makes a very nice screen. Yep. I would almost just, I would almost just leave them too. Okay. Because they're going to break down as people play them. Yeah. So maybe, maybe like these really small ones. There's not going to be a whole lot of elements. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So maybe leaving those right there is a little challenge. And the, and the people that are going to play are just going to move away from it anyways. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> They're gonna right, back right, away right, from right. us. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, right over in front of Joey. I think. Oh, big rock. Yeah, that. Right here Perfect. Right. That that works. We can <laughs> we can we can move it. Como llamas la la como llamas la la cosa que al tipad? Yo les he estado diciendo tipad. Tipad. Términos que no tienen traducción. Okay. My name is Raúl Barcelo. I'm from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. I had never heard of disc golf because disc golf didn't even exist in Mexico at all. There's so many cool terrains in Mexico to work with all over the country and really all over Latin America. I mean, there's a lot of pretty cactuses over there, but I don't want to mess with them. It's actually illegal to take the cactus. It doesn't look very old, but like think of how many inches that is and that's how many years it is. So you're over six foot, 72, 72 years, huh? Yeah, easily. So these, some of these cactus easily over 100 years old. You need a cactus double mando. <laughs> well, I don't want to hurt the cactuses. And you don't want to be hitting them? I don't personally want them to be hit. Yeah. I don't want to mess with these cactuses. Cacti. Or cacti. Cacti. Cacti, sorry. I don't want to mess with these cacti. Yep. Ah, oh, perfecto, perfecto. <laughs> Como en las películas, ya. Yeah. Paul, what are your thoughts so far? I think it's going well. Uh, we have the course designed. Um, I originally eight out of the nine holes, but I just walked out there with Doug, and I think we found the ninth hole where it's going to go. So that's exciting. So then we can use the big downhill for number nine. Yes, so that'll nice. be eight and nine. So it'll be eight going up and we'll just create a little trail, which the tee pad might have to move a little bit on nine, but the basket will be in the same spot. Okay. So we'll, we'll go up to eight and then we'll see, we'll just walk from that over to that original spot that you found. Yeah. And we'll see if there's anything in between that. Okay. So you can just walk the hillside. Um, but yeah, one, two, three. So it's probably gonna be a new number four. And you feel good about it being kid friendly, but also something that somebody very, could show up and enjoy if they want to. Yes, very kid friendly. If you throw 300 feet, it might be a little bit on the shorter end, but if you throw a little bit further, you might have to create your own pads, but I'm all for that. I think that's perfect. You know, kind of creating a safari course, I think. You know, that's something I encourage because that's what that's what I did when I outgrew my course. Yeah, I love that you can see every basket. Yes. Like you're on the tee pad and it's simple and it's, you know, some, not, not that the course is simple, but it's simple to see where you're supposed to go. And uh, 
I was telling Joey earlier that I think there'll be kids out here and adults that'll start to birdie holes and start to birdie multiple holes and pretty soon they will outgrow the course, but I guarantee you they'll be ready to play disc golf after learning There'll be room for them to like expand a little bit or you feel that's pretty... I think there's, yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunity to where they can change the angles and stuff yeah. on some of these holes. Um, the hole one, you can just push yeah. the basket back yep. like and 40, 50 feet to the left. You can either move the basket or some of the tee pads. Yeah. I mean, they're all natural here, so they can push them to wherever they want as they advance and, and develop. Um, they can have like, these are the beginner courses, uh, beginner pads and they can move further if they want. I feel like it'd be good to run through and just throw some shots quick before we really get into the digging. Yeah. And so Doug, baskets are built and ready to roll? The, the baskets are built and ready to roll. We are gonna be digging some holes this afternoon and pouring some concrete and uh, can't wait to see baskets in a place where disc golf wasn't. Rancho El Camino, hole number one. And I have my Jawbreaker Crazy Tough Ledgestone Edition Wasp because Nate Heinold is the one that's missing right now. You ready, dogs? Oh, way too far. All right, we're off. All right, that's <laughs> right. All right, Pete. Oh, really. So the difference between an ultimate frisbee is you want to throw with the this front, the nose up. Disc golf, you want to get that down. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's a long putt. Long. Putt. In North Texas, we have about a hundred courses that I can drive to from Dallas, and uh, I feel like we take that for granted, honestly. Andale, Lazaro. Hey. In Mexico, as far as I know, there's only maybe about four or five courses for the entire country. It's a huge country. That means that unless yeah. you're really lucky, there is no disc golf near you. I think that would have gone in the hole. But yeah. It's really cool for people to get to know a new thing that they can do with their free time. Something that is very enjoyable, it's outdoors, it's healthy. It's a new thing completely new for them. But those could go at the next The layout really came together well. The holes have really awesome features, and it was just a matter of being creative uh, with the baskets. So will we pour concrete all around here? We can. Typically would dig a hole like in dirt. You don't need as much concrete. Another one of the difficulties, and I hate saying it's a difficulty, but just the resources. We're digging yeah. these holes with pickaxes, you know, and you're pickaxing through rock, and you're breaking rock. Pete let us know that well, you can be digging and all of a sudden you're hitting rock. So it's like, all right, you need to move somewhere else. The ground is so sandy here that it, it'll take a ton of concrete, but if we actually put the anchor in a five gallon bucket, it's probably gonna be just fine in this sand. And that's one of the nice things about working in other countries is that a lot of times, you know, they have you know, a lot of good solutions, creativity. You know, they know the, the property, they know the terrain. Emporia certainly does not have this kind of uh, terrain to uh, install <laughs> baskets in for sure. We didn't find like quickrete, so we made the concrete. The concrete mix was literally just the sand that you were walking on and their bags of concrete. And you just mix it and this concrete was just like rocks, pretty much just stuck together and that's how these baskets are in the ground and the T signs are in the ground. It's a little bit harder, but it's fun to make it because you're having fun with the people and you are, you are talking about your life and stuff like that. So it's, it's good, it's good. To, you have a good time and you do the job, the work that you have to do. I don't want to say it's been a hard time. For me it's like normal, but I know for you guys like, for Americans, it's not normal that you guys do this. This staff, I, I can't talk about this staff and the youth that are here enough. I don't think our team that came here could have put that course in the way that they did. They had it done pretty much in a day. The only reason it wasn't done in a day is because we had to let the concrete cure. I just want to list them. You know, we got Luis, Luis, Julio, Beto, and then Lazaro. Lazaro was the one that wrangled all these guys up together. Just had them out there doing everything. Just over the river. It's very fun to see the people like doing stuff that they don't usually do with love, like for 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 all the other people. I feel so yeah, happy to work with people like you guys because I know you guys are important. Outside from here, for them it's not usual to, to work like like this, but I can see in her faces they are very happy doing work like yeah. that is not normal. It's harder for them. For me, I feel proud for them and, and for you guys doing this kind of job. 
because it's not, it's not easy. I know, it's not, it's not easy. When I first started playing, at the time, very early on, I remember thinking, I would love to be a part of bringing disc golf to Mexico. This is like a dream. That's what I'm talking about right there. Man, it's beautiful. It's just, what a serene place to play disc golf. Unbelievable. I've never played anything like this, and I've played Utah, which has a lot of rocks. I've played some Colorado mountain courses, but this just has a different flair altogether with uh, the cactus, the rock, the sand. It's, it's phenomenal. This is a great starting hole. Did you get a chance to throw it, Ryan? It, uh, it's one of those holes that you could just throw over and over and over again, and I don't care how good you are, you're gonna wanna keep throwing it. Most of my friends, when they come here, they are thinking tumbleweeds blowing in the wind in the desert. But this place is absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. The blue sky contrasted with the rocks, the vibrance of, of the oasis that we're in here. Uh, to hear the wind through the palms, and it is a joy and blessing to wake up here every morning and look out. Uh, one of my favorite things is to often hear a hawk that will just screech as, you, as you're going around when there's just silence. Took a walk on the property because I just want to see it all. I want to bring it all in, see what we have to work with. And we designed a fun nine hole course. Not, a, not extremely challenging, but perfect for the introduction of disc golf to so many, so many people here in Mexico that have never seen or heard of it. You know, they have so much more land that we didn't touch over double the land over here that we're going to be able to design a more advanced course in the future. If it takes off, we can make an advanced level course. Utilize the elements, utilize the rock formations, the sand, the water that they have. To be honest, I think it's fun. I would love to come out here and play more and, and even make some safari layouts and just go out here and enjoy what they have. So you grab right. one side of the cage and he grabs the other. Mm -hmm. Got it? Uh huh. I'm falling in the hole yeah, with it. Too. Here we go. We are done. Sweet. First one in. I brought this from this. Mars. My NASA Luna. Oh, come on. Do it. Oh! <laughs> that is so good. Oh my gosh. This is the first course in this area, so, you know, we wanted to have a really high standard of excellence and make it look really good. You know, any of the major challenges we were able to work through fairly easily. <laughs> No hurdles we couldn't overcome, and you know the course is in the ground, and I think it's it's awesome. To be able to design the course, concrete the course, have natural pads, have all these elements together. In my eyes, everything's on as good as possible, like near perfect. Woo! All right, let's go have some fun. So hole one. It's beginner course, so 120 feet. Uh, you know, you walk through the playground, you kind of get that little fun atmosphere. And immediately I saw they have a wash, and on the other side they have these big boulders and one palm tree. There was just this open gap between the two, and I thought a basket would look perfect sitting right there. Oh! Hole two, not much further than hole one, maybe an extra 30, 30 feet to it. But now the obstacle on hole two is just the intimidation factor of a 50 foot water carry. Oh, that's so crushed. To people that have never played before, there's one water element on this course right here. I said maybe 50 feet, but then you got the basket a little bit higher than the tee area. But again, some rock formations that you kind of got to carry. And it's surrounded by some thorny bushes and a tr another tree past the basket. Three was a late addition. Um, it was the last hole designed, but I think it actually has the best green out of all of them. Not green, a rock formation, but 
you're teeing off actually from an elevated spot and there's one bush in the middle to where it kind of blocks the basket but you can see through where it is so it's a pretty straight shot but you have to go either left or right of the bush. Oh, Three, we were able to plant it between two big boulders that are shaped like a V. The basket sits right between them and then it's got another 15 foot drop behind the basket to another sandy area and then there's water behind it so you can't really just gun right by it. Maybe one day there'll be a bounce ace or a bounce shot in and just the excitement of you never know what's gonna happen. Four is another unique one. You go into a little bowl area where it's got the sand natural tee box, throw up the rocks, and then the basket is elevated on rocks. It's not elevated on a pole, but it's elevated on rocks. So it probably sits about 20 feet higher than where you're teeing off. But it just kind of sits perfectly in the sky between some boulders. Five is a longer little forehand, but this one's very unique because the green's in some big cactuses. Five and six are similar in their greens, uh, but six actually has a low ceiling tee shot. So you kind of go back into the shade, into the trees a little bit. You throw out of this little window and up to a little elevated basket. But again, you got the cactus elements on six, and that's a really fun one. And then seven's the shortest hole on the course. A little soft forehand or a turnover tucked away to where you can't see it but it's one of those ones where you know if you get it around the corner, you just, all right, I gotta listen for it. And then eight, again, a little picture window to throw out of, and you gotta carry it about a couple hundred feet up the hill, and it's halfway up this mountain. It takes you up to the mountain, and then nine, you're climbing that mountain, you walk over to nine's tee box, and now you can see the entire property from up there. I think it's up here, look. There's the cliff face. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is it, right here. My favorite hole is definitely hole nine because you have to earn the view. You hike all the way up to the top of the mountain and then you can kind of see all the surrounding mountains. There's almost no clouds in the sky and the mountains look so like pronounced amongst that beautiful blue sky. Joey and I were literally up on that tee pad and we, we didn't have shovels, we didn't have picks, we didn't have any of that stuff. And we literally found a spot that we felt like could work. This is a big one and we only had our hands and our feet and we just started kicking the side of the hill, kicking rocks out, and then utilizing these rocks to build retaining walls so it didn't wash out. How'd you level it so good? Well, I put my Adidas on the ground and they just, just have could, a little just could leveling feel, bubble. Just could feel it. That'd be funny, a leveling bubble in your shoe. <laughs> I think it's like the perfect finishing hole and you just stop for a moment, catch your breath, appreciate the beauty, and then send one flying all the way down to the basket and maybe you'll catch a chain or two. I briefly met Paul when I was in Waco. Honestly, he's so cool. He's really involved with this. He's out there carrying baskets and with the pickaxe going at rocks and uh, using his feet to level out a tee pad. It was crazy, I couldn't believe it. It makes you want to be out there helping the guy because you know who he is and you're like, whoa, 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 you should be over there hanging out, not uh, working harder than anybody else. Respect. Some of my friends have given me a hard time for not knowing who Paul Macbeth was, but we are so grateful and appreciative for Paul Macbeth's foundation to come and, and install this disc golf course. The camp has an awesome staff that was enthusiastic and excited. It was just awesome how the team came together. Everybody that we've met here has been really great, and I believe that they're gonna have a lot of success with their disc golf course. This team that was here in, in the ranch, and Pete and all the staff of the ranch, they made this possible. We're only here on the ranch for four days. You know, you can only do so much in four days and show someone that's never heard or seen disc golf what to do and make it a sustainable opportunity for all the people that come here. It's been a good time, man. What I can say, it's, it's good to learn, I'm very interested about it, and, and I want to be a good player if I can. As in, as in charge, I'm pretty sure I have to learn more. <laughs> oh. Oh. Building a course is important, but what good is it if you don't have anyone to play it, right? Quiero uh, presentar a mis amigos. Ellos son de la Fundación de Paul Macbeth. Bien, gracias a ellos. Él es el campeón del mundo. No una vez, dos veces, tres, cinco veces. Bueno, muchísimas gracias a todos por tenernos. Me llamo Joey. Um, soy como un profesional aspirando. No soy como al nivel de mi amigo Pablo, pero... I've taught clinics back home, and I always love it. 
probably more than, than I'll ever love winning a tournament or succeeding at the pro level as an athlete. Mucho, hay muchas personas que sabe algo sobre la técnica de hacer lo correcto. Joey Tamale, I had the pleasure of meeting him during this trip. He impressed me every day with his language skills, brightness, his quickness. It's really cool to see he's got a natural ability for it. Listo, vamos. <laughs> Good job. That was great, I don't know what you said, but you nailed it. I obviously love teaching, and it's even more fun when I can teach in Spanish. There's just something to me about giving back and like seeing the happiness in those little kids' eyes that is it's priceless. All right, so we're going to talk about the technique of putting quickly. Vamos a hablar de la técnica de putting. There's uh, an immediate payoff. Um, when that kid hears that the clang of the chains and like I can achieve something. It may seem small and an insignificant thing just to throw a frisbee into a basket and chains. From a counseling psychological perspective like that, to leverage that to help launch a kid forward is, is huge. To see somebody do something and then you tell them, well, you're doing this wrong, try it like this, and then it works and they get all excited. It's really cool. I mean, I, I have a very huge sense of fulfillment right now. So I'm getting emotional, bro. With us bringing disc golf here, we're just bringing up the opportunity to kind of have some of the lessons that so many of us have learned through disc golf. If I lived in La Paz as a kid, this would be where I would want to come. One of the most common things children and youth who say, why do they like to come to the ranch, is they say, I feel safe here. It's one of those amazing places that you find all over the world. They work so hard for these kids, just giving them the opportunity to succeed in life. I mean, that's like the greatest gift you can give anyone, is an opportunity to have a better life. Everything I do is for you guys. Like, we don't do this job for, for me, for my boss. We do it for God and for the community, for the people. So that's my motivation, my inspiration. Disc golf was solely my escape. I know a lot of those years of high school you don't get back, but I felt like I was more pulled towards disc golf. That was where I went after school. That is where I was during the summer. That's all I was really doing. These kids and these adults and these teenagers can have an opportunity to make so much with so little. Woo! More stable in the None of this, and I mean none of this, could be possible without you know, the team that we have, the staff that's, that's made this trip happen, the donors, just anyone that's believed in this foundation or who sees this for the first time and wants to help, thank you. Like, that, that's all I can say is, is, this is this is just the beginning. This is the first project and we're gonna do so many more and give so many more opportunities, so. And I'm not gonna lie right now. The kids are out there playing. I can hear them laughing and having a good time and I'm kind of jealous that I'm here and not there. So this is, it's, it's doing its job right now. Like, just thank you.